Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In this video, we're going to be doing the same thing we did with Affinity Photo, and that is to simulate narrow depth of field with Pixelmator Pro. Again, the goal here is to make the subject stand out even more naturally. After this process, we hope you can become more familiar with the tools of Pixelmator Pro. By the way, stick around till the end as I'll be telling you which tool is better for simulating depth of field Pixelmator Pro or Affinity Photo. So let's get right into this. Now for those who didn't watch my Affinity Photo video, let's review what depth of field is. Depth of field is the distance between the closest and farthest object in a photo that appears acceptably sharp. Note that the camera can only focus sharply at one point. Also note that the transition from sharp to unsharp is gradual. Once again, here's an example of how depth of field improves a photo. You see that the dog is sharp while the background is out of focus, which is really nice to make the dog stand out. Note that the blurring of the background is gradual. The farther an object is from the foreground, the more out of focus it becomes. So we're going to be simulating creating the narrow depth of field effect with this image, which is my very own photo of my dog Rusty taken with just an iPhone 10. While I like the expression of Rusty, the background is just too distracting and needs to go out of focus big time. So what are we going to be using to blur the background and create the narrow depth of field? What we're going to be using is the bokeh blur effect. The bokeh blur effect simulates the out of focus regions captured on the camera. Just like in Affinity Photo, all you have to do is drag the radius slider to the right to make the blurring stronger or to the left to reduce it. Another thing we're going to be doing in this video is showing you how to create a layer mask from an image. Note that you can create a layer mask from any image on your Mac. I find that this method is more convenient to do editing of the mask because you can see the mask much larger than if you were working with the layer mask directly. Just like any other mask, an area of the image mask that is 100% black will be hidden, while areas that are 100% white will be opaque while any other colors in between will partially hide the layer. Before we create the mask and do the blurring, let's do some minor editing to enhance the image. So let's just do the minor editing now. All I'm going to do here is just increase the exposure. And I've noticed that the colors are a little bit flat, so I'm just going to enhance the vibrance. And finally, I'm just going to desaturate the greens in the background because I find those too distracting. Okay, there you have it. So that's as much editing I'm going to do with this image. Now that the editing is done, let's begin creating the mask. As I mentioned, I won't be editing the layer mask directly as I want to see the mask larger in full screen. I'm going to be saving the mask as an image. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new layer. So I'm just going to click insert an empty layer button. Next, I'm going to select the subject here, which is our dog. So I'm just going to click the image layer once again. And I'm just going to press Q on my keyboard and then just choose select subject. Okay, select subject is done. Let's just make sure there are no errors. I'm going to click on select and mask. And we do see there are some errors. So let me just try to correct some of these. I'll just choose quick selection brush. And then I'll make sure that the subtract areas from the existing selection is clicked. Let me just remove some of the mistakes here, like so. So that looks fine. Let's just click apply to this. All right, the selection is done. Now, as I want this subject to be sharp, I'll make sure that this portion of the mask has to be in black. I'm just going to paint the selection black. So make sure that the image layer is selected and then just paint with the paintbrush and make sure the color is set to black. So that's done. Now let's create the mask for the background. So to hit the background, what we're going to do is invert now this selection. And you can do that by pressing Shift Command I to invert the selection. Now, if you can't remember that, you can always go to edit 
and just choose invert selection. But the shortcut is Shift Command I. To make the blurring of the background gradual, we want a gradual transition from sharp to unsharp. To simulate that, we'll be using the gradient tool and let's just paint the gradient over the background. Foreground, obviously, it's going to be sharp, but we want to have a nice long transition to make it really realistic from black to white. All right, so I think that is looking good. Now that the mask has been created, let's save this mask as an image. So I'm just going to go here to File, Export. I'll just call this thing Mask, like so, and just click Export this image here. All right, so the mask has been saved. So notice why we are not using the layer mask. We're creating the mask as an image and saving it as an image. It's because we can actually work with the mask in this very large view. If you did the same thing with the layer mask, you would have to view the mask as a thumbnail, like what you see here on the left side. And that might be a little bit too small if you want to be a little bit precise of where you put the gradient and the like. So I thought that this method is a lot more convenient to do. So now that we're done saving the mask as an image, what I'm going to do here is just delete the top layer. So I'm just going to right click and click delete. Next, let's add the bokeh blur effect. I'm just going to remove any of the selections by pressing command D. That'll get rid of all the selections. And now let's add the bokeh blur effect. So all you need to do is press the insert a layer button, choose effects. On the right panel, click add effect, choose from the blur category bokeh. So you can see as I increase the radius, the blurring becomes much greater. Let's choose a very high radius here to make sure the unpleasant background goes really out of focus. Now, obviously when you blur the image like this, the effect is applied to the whole image. So what we need is to add our mask. So we can right click on effects here and from the options, make sure to choose choose mask. I'm going to select mask.jpg and then I'm going to click add mask. You can see here the effect of the mask. Our subject is nicely sharp while our background has a gradual transition. You can control the amount of blur that you want to give by simply adjusting the radius. So this is the before and the after. Before and the after. A big improvement makes the subject really stand out. So to answer the final question, which editor do I prefer for this kind of effect? Pixelmator Pro or Affinity Photo? Well, as I've said in my last video, Pixelmator Pro has the superior selection tools because of its AI select subject makes the selection process so much easier. That being said, I find the bokeh produced by Affinity Photo at 100 pixels, which is the maximum, a little bit more pleasing than Pixelmator Pro. You can see here the comparison of the bokeh. So this is Pixelmator Pro at 100 pixels radius, and this is Affinity Photo at 100 pixels radius. So in my opinion, Affinity Photo's blur looks to me a little bit more natural looking because of the slightly better quality. If you want to simulate depth of field or use bokeh in general, I'll give the edge to Affinity Photo. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, I'd really appreciate if you like, subscribe, and share this content to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.